Hey, my name is Maxim Ivanov and last week I've made a video where I've shown how to create a React query CRUD application and I was using a server which I wrote using Express.js and then it was documented using Swagger which is a tool to generate interactive documentation. A lot of you have asked in the comments how to do this so here you go, this is the tutorial. As usually you will find the code for this video in the video description along with an interactive code sandbox where you can play around with this example. Press the like button, subscribe and let's go! First let's see what are we going to build. It's gonna be a library API where you can request a list of books. Uh, it's gonna be top programming books in the library. If we click try it out and then execute, we'll get the response from the server with a list of books. You can also create new books using the post requests, get the specific book by its ID, update the book and remove it. We're going to be using Express.js to build the application, Swagger to build the interactive docs for it, and we're going to use Swagger JS doc to write the specifications and Swagger UI Express to serve the UI that you see here. Now let's create the node project, npm init. The package name will be Swagger API library, version one. We skip the description and everything else. Now that we have the project, we're gonna install a bunch of dependencies. Yarn, add. First of all, we're gonna need Express. It's gonna be our server. We'll use loaddb to store the data. Morgan to output the logs for each request. Nano ID to generate the unique identifiers for each of the books, course library, to set up the cross-origin policy, Swagger JS doc, to use the JS doc syntax to write the Swagger specification, and Swagger UI Express, to serve the Swagger UI in our Express application. Enter, and then we wait until the packages are installed. Okay, it's done, now we can start working on our server. We create a new file, as our entry point is called index.js, then we call it index.js. Here we'll make a bunch of imports. First of all, we'll need the express, const express equals require express. We'll also import course equals require course. We'll import morgan, require morgan. We'll import the low db, let's call it low, require low db. We're going to store our data in the file, so we'll need to use the file sync adapter. const file sync equals require low db adapters file sync. Next, we'll initialize the db and the adapter. const adapter equals new file sync, and then we specify the file where we'll store the data. It's going to be db json. And then we create the database instance db using low and passing the adapter to it. Then we're gonna specify the default data for our storage, db, defaults, and then we pass an object with the field books. And it's gonna be an empty array. To record it into the file, we use the method write. Next, we need to initialize the express application. const app equals express. We specify the app.db to the db instance that we've just created. This way we'll be able to access it in our routes, which we'll use a bit later. Then we initialize the course, app use course. We'll need to parse the JSON body of the requests. So we use app use express JSON. Then we connect Morgan, app use Morgan with format dev. Next we can specify the default port constant, const port equals process and port or 4000. So if we have the environment variable port provided, then we'll use it. Otherwise, the default port will be 4000. And then we'll launch the server. App, listen, port, and when the app is launched, we want to see a log. Console, log, the server is running on port, and then the port number. Oh, I also have a typo here. It's require, require. And the port should be all caps, port. Now let's launch the app and see if it works. Open the terminal, node index.js. Open the browser and you should see cannot get root because we didn't specify any routes. Let's go back to the code, stop the app and let's create a new folder. New folder and call it routes. In our app, we're gonna handle only the books routes. So create a new file, call it books.js. Here we're gonna define the routes for our server. 
First make the imports const express equals require express. Then we need the router const router equals express router. Here we'll need the nano ID const nano ID equals require nano ID. We'll use it to generate the IDs of our books. We're going to create a constant of the ID length and it's going to be eight. Next, let's define the books routes router get first we specify the root route request response and then inside of it we're first gonna get the books equals request the request object has the reference to the app and remember how inside of the index.js file we've assigned the app.db to be our db instance now we can access it through the app here db get and we want to get the books record after we got the books we call res send and send the books there. Next, we want to be able to get the book by the ID. Let's define another get route. Router, get, and here we'll need to use the placeholder called ID. Again, request, response. Inside of it, we get the specific book, const book equals request app db get books. And then we need to find the book which has the ID matching the ID from the parameters. So we call find, we pass an options object, with id request params id and then we want the value after we have it we can call response send book we also want to be able to create new books so we define the post route router post root request response and then here we try to create a new book it's going to be a new object with id that we generate using the nano id with id length that we've defined earlier. And then the rest of the properties we'll take from the request body. In real world application, you don't wanna do this and you should be very rigorous with everything that comes from the user or everything that comes from the request. But here it is a learning project and we want to focus on Swagger API rather than writing the server itself. So just know that we've cut the corner here. After we got the book, then we call request app db get books. And then we push a new item there, which is a book, and we call write. If we got an error, for some reason we couldn't record the book, we catch it. And then we respond with status 500, and we send an error. Now we can create the new books. We also want to be able to update the books using the put request. So we define the router put slash colon ID request response. And then we want to get the book by the ID and we want to wrap everything into a try catch block. We try to get the request up db get books where we find the book by its ID that we get from request params ID. And then we assign, this is the method of the low db that allows you to merge the objects. So we only assign the properties that were sent with this request. Assign request body. And then we write it to the database. After we updated the database, we send the response, send request app db get books, find, and here we pass an ID, request params ID. So we write the data and then we send the newly updated book to the user. If we catch an error, then we return res status 500, send error. And the last thing we want to do with our server is to be able to delete the books. Router delete slash colon ID. We pass a callback, request response. We call request app db get books. And then we call remove and we pass the ID that we get from the request params ID. And then after we removed it, we call write to remove it from the database. After it's done, we call response send status 200. Now we have all the routes defined. So we can export the router module exports equals router format the document connect the router to the app go to index.js and say that app use slash books and it's going to be books router we're going to import using const books router equals require routes books for now the dbjson is empty and i'm going to copy the prepared one from another project here we go now we have three great programming books here and we can start working on the Swagger API documentation. Now let's go to index.js and connect the Swagger UI. First, let's import it. Const Swagger UI equals require 
swagger UI Express. And then we need to connect the swagger JS doc. Const swagger JS doc equals require swagger JS doc. Then right before we define the application, create an options object for the swagger. Const options equals definition where we specify the version of the open api specification open api we're using 3.0.0 then we define the project info the title will be library api version 1.0.0 and the description will be a simple express library api and then we can specify the servers we're going to have only one the localhost 4000 but you can also specify the staging or production server. What it does, it allows you to pick which server should you execute the requests against. Let's do it. Servers, and then it's gonna be an array with one item with URL, HTTP, localhost 4000. And then the last property is where to take the APIs. All our APIs will be defined in the routes. In our case, it's only the books API, but maybe we will add another one like users or subscriptions or whatever. So we're gonna just say that our APIs are located in the routes folder. So add the APIs field, which is an array with one string routes, and then everything that ends with JS there. Then we can initialize the Swagger JS doc, const specs equals Swagger JS doc, and then we pass in the options. As we specified the APIs location, now Swagger JS doc will know where to parse the JS doc comments, and it's in the routes folder. And then after we've defined the app, we can say app use the route API docs. We pass Swagger UI serve as a callback, Swagger UI serve. And then we specify the specs that will be used to build that UI, Swagger UI setup, and we specify the specs. All right, we have one little typo here. The APIs field should be on the top level of options after the definition. So we move it down, add a, add a comma, and then form the document. Now we can try launching the app, node index.js. Open the browser, the API docs URL. You should see this interface where you can pick the servers where only one is available. And for now, no operations are defined in spec. So let's start adding those definitions. Go to books.js, scroll up. And first we'll begin by defining a book schema because all our endpoints, all our routes work with the same model. We have the books, or the book that we need to return or accept in the post request or put request properties, it's a good idea to define it as a separate entity. So how you do it with Swagger JS doc? First of all, you create a multi-line comment, then you say at Swagger or at open API. We're gonna use the Swagger version. And then you specify the components field, components. In the Swagger documentation, you can see a good example why you might need it. So for example, we have two paths defined, the users with user ID where we get one specific user, or we want to get all the users. In both requests, we're expecting to receive an object with an ID, which is an integer, and a name, which is a string. You can see it in both requests. And using the schema, we can get rid of those duplicated definitions. So we define the user model once, and then using the ref property, we reuse it in both paths definitions. So we're gonna do something similar. In the components section, we define the schemas, and there we define a book schema. It's gonna have type object, and then it's gonna have two required fields, title and author required, and then it's an array, title and author. After we've marked the required fields, we can specify the descriptions of the fields we have here. We do it using the field properties. So each book will have an ID, the type will be string, and the description, we'll say that it's the aura generated ID of the book. Then we have the title, type, string, description, the book, title. And then the author is gonna also have the type string and the description will be the book author. We can also provide an example of the book object. We do it using a field example. Here we specify the ID and there would, it would be some randomly generated hash D, 5FE underscore ASZ. The title could be the new Turing Omnibus. And the author will be Alexander K. Dooney. All right, now we have the book defined. Let's check if it worked. Relaunch the server, node index.js. Go to the browser and you should see the schemas with the book defined there. Verify that it worked correctly. 
If everything is fine, let's move on. After we've defined the book schema, we can move on to the routes. Let's define another multi-line com comment at Swagger. And then the first route is the root. But when you define the routes in your Swagger specification, they're defined relative to the server URL. So in our case, we'll have to say that it's books, even though we are in the books routes. And in our app, they're mounted with the books prefix. In the specification, we still have to define it manually. And this is the get route. So the next line is get. Next, we can specify the summary, the description of this request. Summary returns the list of all the books. Then we can specify the responses. And here you can describe the response codes that you can request, that you can receive from the server. So for example, 200 means that everything is fine. And we got our list of the books. Description, the list of the books. Content, here we specify the type of the content. It's gonna be application JSON. And then we can also set the schema of this response. So here we're gonna get an array of the books. So we specify the schema type is going to be an array and the items in this array will have the type of the book. So we say items are going to use the ref dollar sign ref. And here we use the following route hash components schemas book. Okay. Time to check if everything works, relaunch the server, open the browser, and you should see the get all books route. We can immediately try it out, click execute. And we got the list of the books. It works. But it's also a good idea to group your requests into tags. So for example, here, all the requests we're going to describe are going to be related to books. So let's create a new tag, go back to the code. And before the root route definition, let's have another multi-line comment at swagger. And here we define the tags name is books and the description of this tag description, the books managing API, save it, restart the server and reload the page. Now, instead of the default block, you see the tag with the annotation. To mark the root route with the books tag, we need to go back to the code and inside of the root route definition, below the summary, or actually anywhere else, specify the tags, an array with books. Let's relaunch the server again, reload the page. And now you can see that the root route or the books route is under the books tag. Let's move on. The next route we're gonna describe is another get request but now we want to specify the ID. So we're gonna describe a route where you can pass a parameter. Create another multi-line comment, at swagger. And here we define the URL, books. And if you have a placeholder like this one here, in swagger, you can specify it using the curly braces. And you say ID. This way you tell swagger that there is a parameter in the URL. Next, you specify the method, it's get. We specify the summary. It's gonna be get the book by ID. The tags should also be books and the parameters is going to be an array. And as the parameter we have here is in the path, we need to say that it's in path. The name of the parameter is ID and the schema is type string. We also want to specify that it's required, required true. And the description of this parameter description should be that this is the book ID. Now we can specify the responses. For this request, we have two potential responses, 200 whenever the when everything is fine and we found the book with this ID and 404 if the book was not found. So let's start with the 200 responses, 200 description, the book description by ID. The content of this re response is going to be in JSON format. So we use application JSON and then the schema will be the book that we defined earlier. So we say schema and then we use the ref that will refer to our components, schemas, book definition. And then we also have the 404 response, 404, which does not return anything. So it will only have the description. Description, the book was not found. All right, let's relaunch the server and see if it works. If you go to API docs, you should see another request, get the book by ID. You have the required ID field, which is in the path. And then you can get the book description by ID. Let's test it. First, let's get all the books. And for example, we get the first ID, we copy it, and then we try to use it in the get book by ID route. Paste it here, click execute, and we get the book description. 
Let's try it with some ID that does not exist. And we didn't get the 404. So this documentation is also a good way to test your APIs, at least manually. Let's go back and make sure that if the book wasn't found, we return the 404 status. Open the code and in the get by ID request, we specify if there was no book, then res send status 404. Let's relaunch the server, go back to the browser and try to execute this query again. Good, now we get the 404 not found. Let's move on to the next requests. Here we specify the post request, multi-line comment at swagger, the route is books, the method is post, the summary is create a new book, the tags are books, the request body that we specify here because it's a post request and we have a body field in the request, request body, is gonna be required. You cannot create a new book without the data, so required is true. And the content should be in JSON format, application slash JSON. And here we can reuse this schema again, because when we create a new book, we send the same kind of object as we expect to receive when we get the book. So we say schema, and then we use the ref, and we use the same path again, components, schemas, book. And now we can specify the responses. We can get 200 if everything is fine, Description, the book was successfully created. And the content in this case is, is going to be the created book value. So it's going to be a JSON application slash JSON. And then the schema will again be this reference that we've created earlier. Ref, hash, components, schemas, book and it should start with a capital letter. But something can go wrong because we have this try catch block and we can possibly send the 500 if there was an error. So we need to declare it as well. And then the description will be some server error. All right, time to test it. Let's relaunch the server, restart the page. And here you go, we have the post request. We can now create new books. Let's try it out. And we already have an example here because we've specified the example in the schema. We don't need the ID here, so we remove it and we click execute. Okay, and the server for some reason is not responding. Let's look at our post request handler. Here, for some reason, I forgot to actually respond with this data. So instead of just returning the recorded book, I need to send it using response send and then I send the book. Let's relaunch the server, go back and try to execute it again. Execute and now we got the response with the ID with which the book was actually created. Okay, let's go and define the put request. Here the definition will be a little bit more complex because now we have both the ID in the parameter, we have the request body and we have more options for the responses. We can get 200 if everything is, was fine, we can get 404 if the book was not found, and something can go wrong and we can get the 500 status. So let's define the Swagger definition at Swagger. Here we specify the path books ID in the curly braces. We define the put request, the put method. The summary is update the book by the ID. The tags should be books. And then we specify the parameters. In our case, it's only one parameter in path. It's the ID. So the name is ID. The schema of this parameter is just type. It's a string. It is required, required true. And the description is the book ID. Now we also need to define the request body. Request body. It's required, so required is true. The content is JSON. So the content, application, JSON. And then we reuse the book definition for the schema. Schema, ref, and then you already know how it goes. Components, schemas, book. After we have the response body defined, we can go on with the responses. And here we'll have three, 200, 404, and 500. So if everything is fine, then we're expecting to, re to get to receive the updated book description, the book was updated. 404, the description is the book was not found. 
and the 500 means that there was some server error description some error happened and then for 200 response we also want to specify the content the content is going to be application json the schema is the book so we use the ref components schemas book let's relaunch the server and check if it still works you should see the put request here now we have only one request left to describe and it's the delete as you can guess it's done exactly the same way as previous requests you use the add swagger then you specify the route books id you specify the delete method you set the summary remove the book by id set the tags it's going to be the books and then we set the parameters in path name id schema type string actually now that i'm looking at the parameters that we specify in path i believe that we could actually use the components section to define some parameters like reusable path query header and cookie parameters so i think it's a good homework for you to improve this code base and try to re to make a reusable parameter because you see it's all the same inside of the get put and delete requests we are using this parameter that's in the path the book id which is a string so I think it's a good idea to define it. It's always required. It's always a string required true. And the description will all be, always be the same. So it's definitely can be re, it definitely can be reused. Description, the book, ID. And then we have the responses. Responses can be 200 if it worked and 404 if we didn't find such book. Description, the book was deleted and the book was not found description the book was not found that's it let's relaunch the server take a look at the ui and it seems to be working thank you for watching if you watch till the end then it probably means that you like my videos and i'd like to ask you a question usually i make my videos using javascript as an example as the example language would you like it more would you prefer if i would use typescript examples because me personally i like typescript more it's more comfortable to me to write typescript than javascript what do you think let me know in the comments would it be better if i would use typescript for the code examples or should i stick to javascript see you next time